Hello, everybody. So I'm here to show you how to value Bitcoin. It's the biggest question out there, right? So every day I see people making the same mistake I made 30 years ago. They don't know the difference between price and value. This is me 30 years ago, a newly minted stockbroker with a company called A.G. Edwards. I was 22 years old at the time, and I didn't know how to value stocks back then. Um, when I look at this picture, I see the fire in my eyes, but to tell you the truth, I had no idea what I was doing. So what I did was I sought out one of the most experienced brokers in our office. Leo Samet was 80 years old. He was born in 1911, and when, this, you know, when I started A.G. Edwards in 1991, um, you know, like I said, he was 80 years old. I went into his office and asked him, Leo, you've been with AG Edwards for 50 years. I'm sure you could help a new broker out by giving me some advice on like, how to be successful in this industry. We locked eyes for about five seconds, which seemed like about five minutes to me. And I knew exactly what he was doing. He was sizing me up. He goes, this, you know, he was thinking to himself, does this kid deserve to know the secret of success with investing? And after about five seconds, he looked down at his desk, he reached over, slid a piece of paper over to me, and he said, put all your clients in this and you'll be just fine. What he did was he slid me a research report on a company called Berkshire Hathaway. All I could see was the price. I could see $8,300 for the price of Berkshire Hathaway. I didn't know how to value a company. All I could see was the price. And I looked at him and I was like, Leo, this is $8,000 a share. My clients aren't going to buy an $8,000 stock. Why don't you show me something like at a dollar or at $10? And, he, and the mistake I was making is I was looking at the price and I didn't understand the value. I didn't understand the value of Warren Buffett's expertise in investment management. I didn't understand the value of the cash flow that was being generated by the company. I didn't understand the value of predicting interest rates were going to drop from 10% on the U.S. Treasury, 10-year Treasury, down to 1%. And so all I was looking at the price. And because I didn't know the difference between price and value, I missed it. You know, Berkshire Hathaway, over the last 30 years, went from $8,300 a share up to over $400,000. It's about a 5,000% increase. And the, like I said, the mistake I made is I didn't know the um, difference between price and value. So when I learned about Bitcoin back in 2014, I thought it was a total scam. I, came, I come from traditional finance. Um, you know, I saw this internet funny money that people said were being used for nefarious activities. But I understood that we were going to use open source blockchain protocols to rebuild our entire financial system. So I invested in Bitcoin. Um, I didn't know how to value it back then. It took me two years to figure out how to value Bitcoin. So now what I'm going to show you is how to value Bitcoin so you don't make the same mistake I made 30 years ago. Because we know how to value Bitcoin at off-the-chain capital, this has enabled us to be the number one performing blockchain fund over the past two years since, over the past two years since we reopened the fund and over the past four years since we started the fund. Okay, so before I get into our models, I need to give a disclaimer. So off-the-chain capital is an SEC registered investment advisor. Because of that, what I'm going to show you are considered forward-looking statements. And so these aren't price guarantees of Bitcoin. And by no means does this constitute financial advice. Okay? So just to get that clear. Okay. So the first model that we use is based on S-curve analysis. So when I was studying at Cambridge University back in 1988, I learned about S-curves. And basically what S-curve analysis does, it predicts the adoption path of a new technology. Bitcoin started in 2009. By 2019, 10% of U.S. households owned Bitcoin. 
Last year, Brian Brooks, the comptroller of the U.S. currency, was being interviewed on CNN, and he said during that interview that 15% of U.S. households own cryptocurrency last year. There was a study issued out a couple months ago that surveyed 30,000 residents of the United States, and in that study, it showed that 25% of U.S. households own cryptocurrency today. Okay. We're on this path to mass adoption of Bitcoin. Okay. By 2029, it's projected that 90% of U.S. households will own Bitcoin. So the basic theory behind this analysis is that when only 25% of households own Bitcoin, it's undervalued. When 90% of households own Bitcoin in 2029, it would be fairly valued. So Bitcoin is undervalued today. Another model that we use, I call it the trend is your friend. But basically all we do is we take the historical price of Bitcoin, we plot it out on a, lo we plot it out on a um, logarithmic scale, we run a linear regression line through the center of that. This model is 90% correlated to the historical price of Bitcoin. What this model shows today is Bitcoin slightly undervalued today. But what it projects, though, is that in about 10 years, Bitcoin's going to be worth somewhere between $10 million of Bitcoin and $100 million of Bitcoin. Okay? So you could laugh now, $100 million of Bitcoin. So, like I said, this model is 90% correlated to the historical price of Bitcoin. Another model that we use it's based off Metcalf's law. So Tom Lee at Fundstrat came up with this model a few years ago. And basically, we take a derivative off it. What we do is we square the number of users, which is how you value a network, and then we multiply the number of transactions and the volume of transactions going through that network. And we get a, a formula, or we get a model for that. Between 2014 and 2017, this model was 94% correlated to the price of Bitcoin. What happened in December of 2017 was that the price of Bitcoin and the model started to diverge. And the reason it started to diverge was that the CME it started to allow people to short Bitcoin. People were betting against it. And then you had a lot of excess negative government branding around Bitcoin, calling it nefarious and criminal to use it. You had excess U.S. regulations, and most recently, we've seen the model diverge because of all this ESG controversy, which in my opinion is completely fake news. Another model that we use is based off Plan B's model. So if you Google Plan B or Google 100 trillion USD, you'll find his research on his model. This model is 95% correlated to the price of Bitcoin. And what this model projects is that Bitcoin will be worth $100,000 at the end of this year, a million dollars at the end of 2025, and $10 million at the end of 2029. And then we get to my mo most favorite model. So this is the stock to flow model, but we take dollars out of the equation and we insert gold as the monetary layer or monetary unit for this model. So when this model, when we first started looking at this model, it took four ounces of gold to buy Bitcoin a couple years ago. Today it takes 28 ounces of gold to buy one Bitcoin. This model is projecting at the end of this year it's going to take 100 ounces of gold to buy one Bitcoin. At the end of 2025 it's going to take 1,000 ounces of gold to buy one Bitcoin. And at the end of 2029, it's going to take 10,000 ounces of gold to buy one Bitcoin. So 10,000 ounces of gold today is worth $18 million. This model is 99% correlated to the price of Bitcoin. You can't get more accurate than that. You know, this is the model that we rely m uh, most on. It is the stock-to-flow model based on gold. So just to circle back to the lessons I learned 30 years ago, I see people making the mistake with Bitcoin today that I made 30 years ago. They don't know the difference between price and value. When I see people buying Dogecoin, I ask them, why are you buying Dogecoin? 
Well, because it's 34 cents. I can't afford Bitcoin at $38,000. That's the mistake I made 30 years ago, right? So why are you buying Bitcoin cash at $600? Because I can't afford Bitcoin at $38,000. That's completely the wrong way of thinking about it. We own Bitcoin because it's the most valuable asset on earth today. So after Ethereum converts over from proof of stake or from proof of work over to proof of stake, Bitcoin will constitute 88% of the proof of work protocols. Doge, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Monero, Zcash, they'll constitute the other 12%. So the world has decided already that Bitcoin is the winner. So just to close, I see Bitcoin as being the most valuable asset on earth today. No matter how high the price goes on Bitcoin, there's only a finite number. There's only 21 million Bitcoin that could ever be created. And because there's that finite number, the price will continue to go up and it will become the monetary layer of the world. Bitcoin has the ability to set us free from fiat currency because we're now able to control the value that we create and we're able to hold our own money. I'd like you to watch the 60 second video before I wrap things up. Like William Wallace, I see a whole army of revolutionaries in front of me. We are paving the way to financial freedom. You don't have to die for freedom though. You simply have to take two steps. Step number one is buy Bitcoin. Step number two is never fucking sell it.